So in all of the regressions for the Apple experiment, we assume that the prices affect the demand in a linear fashion. Yeah, so this is this linear function. Uh, so this, in other words, this means we assumed a constant causal effect beta one. So one dollar price increase of the ecological prices reduces the demand by always by the same amount in pounds, irrespective of which price we have. So if we increase a price from ten dollars per pound to eleven dollars, we have the same effect on demand than if we increase the price from one dollar to two dollars. Of course, at some point, this cannot be hold true anymore because demand would be zero and then negative demand is unlikely. Um, so definitely this is just a uh, simplification, this linear demand function. But of course, real world demand functions don't need to be linear. Now, so in chapter one, we already discussed uh, uh, regression in locks, which is kind of a different specification. But you could also specify um, and estimate other specification via OLS. For example, a demand function that is quadratic in the price of ecological apples and perhaps also quadratic in the price of regular apples. So it would uh, look like this. So the demand for ecological apples depends linear on the price of ecological apples, but we also have a quadratic term of it. And we also have the quadratic term for the price of regular ap apples. Note that this is still called a linear regression because we still have a function that is linear in those coefficients and also linear in the error term. So we can add squares or other uh, maybe cubes or other transformations of our explanatory variables as long as it's a linear function of beta and the error term u, it's still called a linear regression. Yeah, and now in this quadratic specification, um, um, now the causal effect of a price increase on the demand depends on the actual price. So if I take the derivative of this demand function with respect to the price of the ecological price, I find it's beta 1 plus 2 times beta 2 uh, and the ecological price. So this means here we would assume that if we have a higher price of the ecological apples, then um, a price increase uh, may be different than if we have a lower price of the ecological apples. Whether it's larger or bigger depends on the relative size of beta 1 and beta 2. So on the right, you see the regression results for our linear specification and for the quadratic specification. And if you compare them, you, you see that in our quadratic specification, we have much larger standard errors for the coefficients. So um, uh, if we add also a quadratic term, we can much less precisely estimate the effect of the price uh, of ecological apples on the demand. Um, this is the case because these two variables here are highly correlated with each other. And if, if explanatory variables are strongly correlated with each other, it's harder to precisely estimate their, uh, their effect. We also see that if like here, for the ecological bias, both the quadratic term and the uh, linear term are negative. So the, this suggests that if we have a higher price, uh, the higher, so if we go back to, to this formula, if both beta 1 and beta 2 are negative, it means the higher is our price, the stronger is the negative causal effect of a price increase on demand. So if the price is already high and we increase the price a little bit more, it suggests that the demand goes down by more. However, we don't find any, uh, we have very large standard errors, so it's not really clear. Um, we don't find a significant coefficient here. So we shouldn't interpret this quadratic term too strongly. And for the regular price, we find a different uh, sign for the linear term and the quadratic term. And if you have these two different signs, it's really hard to to see from the regression output whether on average, a higher regular price increases the demand for ecological apples or reduces it. And the linear specification, we have very clearly this positive sign. So we know uh, a higher price of regular apples um, increases the demand for ecological apples, which would make sense from an economic uh, point of view. Um, but it's hard to see with the quadratic specification. So these are two reasons. Uh, why often 
research papers stick with linear specification or perhaps specification in logs. They can be easier to be inter interpreted, the coefficients, and uh, one can more precisely estimate the coefficients. So you see a lot of linear specifications in empirical papers, even so people do not necessarily believe that the all effects are just linear. So most researchers uh, probably believe that if you estimate a linear specification, it probably approximates some more complex nonlinear functions. Um, for an example, how we can think of this approximation, consider a simulation on the right. So we have 10,000 observations, uh, some error terms, some axes that are uniformly distributed, and the y depends linear on, on x linear, alpha with coefficient alpha 1, but it also depends on the uh, square of x with the coefficient alpha 2. Both alpha 1 and alpha 2 are equal to 1. Yeah, so, um, and so if we estimate basically this quadratic specification, I do this here, we get again the coefficients uh, in front of uh, x equal to, to 1 and of x square also equal to 1. But we could also estimate a linear specification, then we get basically get the coefficient in front of the x of around 11. Okay, so this is kind of a linear approximation of this quadratic function. And here I have graphically illustrated it. So these black dots are the true observations. This blue line would be the predicted value from our linear specification. Yeah, so you see how this approximates the actual quadratic funct functional form. Yeah, so in, in the true model in the quadratic specification, um, the causal effect of a marginal increase in x, so if we increase x by one unit, is simply the derivative of this function. So it's alpha 1 plus, plus 2 times alpha 2x. So uh, inserting alpha 1, alpha 2 equal to 1, we, we find that the uh, y changes uh, if we increase x by one unit, unit by 1 plus 2x. So the larger is x, the bigger is the change on y. So we see here that the slope gets steeper the larger is x. So we have a bigger um, effect on y if x is already larger. And uh, we vary x between 0 and 10 in our simulation, and we, we see that this basically this causal effect then varies between 1 and uh, 21. And in our short linear specification, where we just added x in a linear fashion, we estimated a, a coefficient um, beta 1 hat of roughly 11. And you see 11 is kind of the, the mean of this causal effect. So uh, the mean between 1 and 21 is, is 11. So um, basically also the slope that we estimate is here basically the, the mean of the different slopes we would have in our quadratic function. So in this fashion, if we estimate kind of a constant causal effect with the linear specification, one would typically think that there's a mean of a possible causal effect that my may differ a little bit uh, with the values of x. And whether it's a good or bad approximation depends on how nonlinear the function is and probably also uh, about the value of the x. So around the center, so if x would be 5, the true causal effect would indeed also be 11. So then our linear um, approximation of the slope is very nice. At the borders, we are far, far off. So here we, the true causal effect would be 21, the slope of this black line, but uh, our linear specification only measures the causal effect of 11. So there the approximation is not so good anymore.